All right, welcome back. Uh, Alyssa, we're Walt here studio again. And today for locals that we love, I have Susan Page with us. She is a photographer and has an amazing studio by the mall actually for pictures. So Susan, tell us a little bit about your portrait studio. So we are a uh, boudoir specialty studio, which means all we do is boudoir. So we don't do family portraits, we don't do high school seniors, um, we don't do babies, none of that. Um, we are strictly a boudoir specialty studio, it is all we do. Um, so we cater obviously primarily to women, well I guess all, only to women. We do some couple shoots once in a great while, but they're honestly, they're kind of rare. So we are basically like female centric with what we do. Um, part of, you know, I always say the dirty little secret about boudoir photography is that it's usually, um, it's more about the woman who's doing it than it is about um, the partner who's often getting it as a gift. So um, there's a big misconception out there that ladies do these kinds of shoots just to look sexy in their underwear, um, to give it as a gift to a guy. And, um, and that is, that is a, um, a reason that women do book, um, so, but not the only reason. So even our clients that book and say, oh, I'm doing this as a birthday gift for my husband or a Christmas gift or whatever, generally at some point through the session, it'll come out and they'll say, well, I've always wanted to do this. You yeah. know? Or I've been at a kind of a shitty part of my life and I just needed to feel better and um, and it's just something I've always wanted to do. So I would say it's kind of a gift for both of you because it's, even if you don't realize it coming into it, at some point through the process, clients will come back to me and be like, oh my God, like that was way more for me than it was for him. Yes. And that's really what it's about. So empowering your inner goddess, right? Yeah. Yeah. Cause we all have it. I mean, it doesn't matter how old you are or what size you are. Um, you know, it's, uh, she's there in all of us. And unfortunately, I always say that one of the things I love about boudoir is that it's, it's the only sort of um, type of photography that is, um, is extremely psychological. So, I mean, if you think about it, you are, um, the first huge step you're taking is booking it. Uh, I have clients that tell me they stalk my page for years before they actually pull the trigger and book it. So, I mean, that's huge to actually go ahead and do that. My one client joked in a blog we wrote on her that she sat down and drank a whole bottle of wine while I was launching my Black Friday sale a couple of years ago. And then, you know, a bottle of wine down, she was like, what the hell? Why not? <laughs> Look book, now. Yeah, book, but yeah. And I mean, this really is not uncommon. Um, but you're, you know, you're coming into a studio, you're, you're doing something that's uh, completely out of your comfort zone that, you know, probably 98% of my clients have never done before. And um, you're, if you're like most normal women, you're not feeling great about all of you and all of yourself. So um, you're walking in and seeing me and my staff who you've never met before in your life and you're gonna get down to your skivvies and you know let me take pictures of you and <laughs> i mean it doesn't get a whole lot more vulnerable than that honestly um and that's a huge step to take i, I tell all my clients the biggest hardest thing you're going to do all day long the day of your session is get out of your car and walk in the building and if yeah. you can if you can do that and get into the studio you're fine it's a cakewalk from there on out so um, you do get champagne so i mean that helps <laughs> yes yes if you like champagne we do offer some champagne while you're in hair and makeup um but yeah it's um it's a very psychological type of shooting um from start to finish a lot of my clients are women that are middle-aged um we've got families you know kids some of us also have parents that are getting older that are requiring you know care um, we've got, uh, some of us have had careers that you're, you know, for some of my clients are kind of aging out of some of their careers. Um, 
but you've given so much of yourself. You know, we're soccer moms, we're running kids everywhere, we're taking care of making sure there's groceries in the house and food on the table and dinner ready, and everybody's got clean freaking clothes. And this one needs to get to that practice, and that one needs to get there. And you know, your husband wants to know where the hell you keep the tax returns, even though you've told them 2,500 <laughs> times, right? I mean, we're like the keeper of all things. And we lose ourselves somewhere in through that journey. Um, and not that any of us regret having our kids. I mean, it's a wonderful mm -hmm. time, but I think we lose part of ourselves. And, and, and I feel that just as much as my clients do. I mean, that, I think that's one of the reasons why I love boudoir as much as I do, because I really relate to the ladies that come into my studio for the most part. Um, I've, I've been there as well. And you just, you have an, I've had clients that have seen their images at their image prayer and been like, like they literally have not seen that person for decades sometimes, sometimes not ever. It's so. really overwhelming too when you're looking at all the pictures that you've, you know, compiled and selected and figured out which the best ones are and all. And between the outfit changes and the positions or the looks that you're telling us to do, it's like, what? That's me? <laughs> How does this possibly look good? I know. <laughs> I know. And then you see it and you're like, oh my God, you know, is mm -hmm. that really me? Yeah. 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 That's really it. common. Um, it's, it's not an easy process. I mean, anybody can do it, but it's not easy as in the way that most people, if they haven't done one, think it is like, oh, I'm just going to go in. I'm going to like sprawl on the bed a little bit or <laughs> you know, stand at the window or sit on the couch and, and look sexy. It's, it's a little bit of a workout. Um, clients it's, are always a little sore the next day. Literally. <laughs> right. I'm not like, that was a real thing. I think it was a good two days till I was like, <laughs> not sore. I know. That's why I always tell everybody, take a little vitamin I, a little ibuprofen, um, after your session and kind of head it off because, um, lower backs get really sore because we arch all the time. Um, which looks great in pictures, but it's really not something we do in our everyday life. Um, so your backs get sore and we point feet a lot to get that, um, just gives you a more elegant um, visual or aesthetic to the images. Plus it makes your legs look a little longer, which um, most of us really like. So I can relate to that because I have short legs, but it gives us a little more muscle tone. So yeah, I hear that the calves kind of hurt a lot too the next day. I don't know if yours hurt, but yeah. yeah, my like I've just it was like an overall I worked out at the gym like soreness. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you worked out at the studio <laughs> in your underwear. But yeah, so it's um but it is a very um mental type of process. Uh you know, and, you know, the other thing is sort of the public perception of it. Um, it's gotten a lot more mainstream these days, but, and I've been doing it for a lot of years. So I was doing it like when, like before it really got big, like right when it first like kind of started mm -hmm. a little bit. And um, women, like my, the most common thing I get asked by people is, you know, it's like the co cocktail party thing. So what do you do? I'm, like, mm, I'm a photographer. <laughs> what kind of photographer are you? Um, I do women's portraiture. <laughs> and then if it like progresses, we'll start to talk about it. And I inevitably, I get asked, so why do ladies do this? Like what makes them want to come and get their picture done in their underwear? And it's, um, it's not, there, there's not really a stock answer to that. And that's what I usually tell everybody. Like over the years that I've been doing this, I've heard everything. I mean, yeah, people do it as gifts. Absolutely. But I've had women come in. I've had actresses coming in because they're aging out of roles. They're losing roles to younger people. I have one whose husband bought it for her as a gift because he says she's beautiful and she can't see it. All she sees is that she's losing roles to people that are 15 years younger than she is. Mm -hmm. Um, I've had, um, I have a lot of women that come in for milestones, whether it's um, age milestones, a lot of zero birthdays, um, whether it's uh, fitness milestones, fitness, weight loss, any of those. 
um, a lot of relationship milestones, um, relationships starting as well as relationships ending. Um, <laughs> Nothing like a revenge photo shoot. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I shed 175 pounds. I'm getting divorced. So, and, and shedding that, but by shedding that, I mean by getting rid of their husband. Um, but yeah, it's, um, I've had, I had one client come in years ago who, who literally stood there and said at the beginning of her session, I want to be anywhere but here right now. And we were all like, what? And she's like, I'm here because my therapist told me I need to do this. So long story short, she was um, coming out of um, an abusive marriage and um, she didn't see herself. And she was gorgeous. She was like this tiny little thing. She was fit. She ran like 25,000 miles every day. And then... <laughs> Came home from her like high end type A job and like went to the gym for two hours. And I mean, she had like the body that we're all like, like I could do all that and still not be built that way. And she was gorgeous. And we're like, what? She's like, I don't see this. She said, I do not see it, which is one of the reasons why I think she was constantly running and going to the gym and working out and everything. Um, So um, she ended up being one of my best clients ever. Um, she ended up being a friend of mine after that as well. Aww. And, um, uh, you know, she, she's recommended us to so many people, but she, uh, she was the first one that told me it was a therapy thing. Um, but I literally, I've had in the last year, year and a half, I've had two women that have come in that have lost children. Mm. Um, and it's been kind of part of their coping process or finding themselves again. I've had a lot of women that have come out of, you know, abused marriages. Um, one woman in particular said to me that, um, she, and she was another one. She was cute. She was like lovely inside and out and just a pretty, you know, pretty woman. And she said, Every time I look in the mirror, she said, my, my, my ex-husband told me I was fat and ugly. She wasn't either of those things, by the way. Mm-hmm. But um, she said, every time I look in the mirror, that's what I see. Now, she was remarried to her current husband, who's wonderful, for 10 years. So 10 years of living with a wonderful man, but all the damage that's done prior, she was still carrying all that, and she was still hearing him in her head when she would look in the mirror. And... Um, so she came in to, you know, to help and to pamper herself a little bit. She'd had a rough couple of years and just to kind of find herself and see herself again. Um, so we have a lot of that. Everybody has a different story when they come in. Absolutely. Yeah. There's a, a why behind it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Yep. What has been your favorite shoot that you've done? Oh, my favorite shoot. I don't know. know. It's hard. There, it is hard. There's like so many. Um, uh, I don't know. Well, that put me on the spot. I have to think. I'm one of those that when I get put on the spot, my brain goes. <laughs> it goes <laughs> flatline. <laughs> Meh. <laughs> uh, my favorite shoot. Well, I love doing the angel wing shoots. They're fun. Um, but uh, I had a, I have a muse that I've shot a couple times um, just for project stuff. And we shot an old warehouse once and she was, she's a ballerina. And so oh, that wow. was fun. Yeah, that was quite a while ago. That was many years ago at this point. But um, uh, I do love really shooting the angel wings and the bathtubs are great. Um, and uh I have one client, she's been in three times now, and I, I would say she was pretty fun because she's very, very down to earth, very um, self-deprecating, very like whatever. I love myself when I have you know 10 extra pounds on me or 20 extra pounds or I'm perfectly fit. Like I'm okay with all this. Yeah. The doll and um, she came in and we did, we did the angel wings and we did the tub set and she just freaking blew it out of the water. And we had so much fun. I think we like practically pissed our pants. I don't know how many times that day because we were laughing like so goddamn hard. Um, but that, that was probably up there. Um, shoot wise is one of my favorites. Um, uh, 
my favorite line, this was funny. I have another client who I shot several years ago. She was actually just in recently um, for, for a second shoot. And uh, we were talking about the poses and how sometimes they can be uncomfortable. And she was doing this one pose. It was a standing pose against the wall. I had her arching like crazy and it looked like dynamite, but I was trying to get the light like exactly where I wanted it. And she was holding it and holding it and holding it. And she finally goes, oh my God, I fucking hate you. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I took the picture. And um, yeah, she ended up, it ended up being one of her favorite pictures from the entire set at the end. She bought the, she bought the image. But to this day, it's known as the I fucking hate you image. So <laughs> <laughs> It's worth it. It is. And it's so true. And you hear it with other people who do photography as well. Not necessarily boudoir, but like even a, a portrait, you have to be in the most like awkward, uncomfortable, weird position in order for it to translate on yeah. film, which is so weird, but yeah, when it doesn't feel sexy at all, right? No. Mm -mm. No, I know. That's why when I'm shooting, I try to like frequently turn the camera around and show my clients the back of the camera so they can see what I'm seeing. Because I know it's up, you know, it, it, it does not feel sexy at all. You know, I'm like, open your mouth more, right? <laughs> yeah. You feel like you're like, <laughs> <laughs> and yes. you're totally not, you know? Close your um, eyes, open your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it's, um, it's interesting. And, you know, I do, I, I get my own sessions done periodically. Um, for that reason, because I feel it's really important. There, there are certain things that are super important um, in a good boudoir photographer, and maybe we want to talk about that at some point. But um, I feel like as a photographer, not only am I female, so you know, having a session done once in a while does me a world of good. Like it gives me a huge shot in the arm. Um, but you also knowing what it's feeling like on the other side of the camera is really important. Um, not only important from like figuring out the poses and stuff, but just knowing like what's going through your client's head. Um, and a lot of what we do is, is directing the posing. So kind of figuring out how, when you're in that pose, what words or descriptions resonate with what you're feeling to get the end result that I'm looking for when I'm behind the camera. Sure. So, um, so I do get sessions done myself. I was down last summer. I did my, my most recent session. I flew down to Nashville and I shot with, um, my good friend, Jamie Fister, who has the Adore Girls down in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Um, she's the bomb. She's awesome. Awesome. Her and Courtney, Courtney works with her. Um, so she did my, my last session and it was funny as hell. Two boudoir photographers together shooting. We actually filmed part of it and she put it up on our group. It was so <laughs> terrible because we're each telling each other what to do. <laughs> yes. But, um, but yeah, it's, um, I think it's really important. And, um, I try to do one on, on some sort of a regular basis. Um, the problem is for me, I travel, uh, to, cause I'm really picky. So, sure. you know, to whatever photographers I would like to go to, um, I would love to go down to Texas. There's a photographer down there that is just the bomb. I would totally fly down to Texas and shoot with her any day of the week. But, um, and, and that's a big thing. Like you really want to research your boudoir photographer, do your homework, um, read what people are saying about them, uh, look at their work, see if it's in a style that you like that resonates with you. Cause it's, it's a very, um, it's a very personal, Thing and everyone has sort of a different style. Like I can look at other photographers' work and without knowing who shot it, I know who shot it. I can tell. Right. Um, so, you know, you definitely want to find someone whose style jives with you. Um, but because it's so intimate and so vulnerable, I think trust is a huge aspect with boudoir as well. So you want to make sure whoever you're choosing to shoot with is, um, is above board, is being honest, um, is putting their own stuff out there, their own work out there, um, that um, you can trust, you know, just some things that to me are, are um, 
kind of no-brainers if you're running a legit business like model releases every client that comes through my doors we do a model release and your option is to sign the i do not release my images which means i can't do anything with those images at all other right. than work on them and then they go to you um and i think that's a big concern for a lot of people when they're going to book a boudoir show well, like what happens to my images once they're done who gets to see them so like with my studio you have total control over that. You can give me a full release, which means I can use them on behalf of the studio for whatever I want, any kind of marketing or you know whatever. Um, you can do a limited release where you can pick and choose where you're okay with us using them, or you can you can do the no release option. Um, so that's one thing to look for, and that's a question to ask if you're looking at different photographers. Ask them that. That if you don't have that piece of paperwork signed. Neither one of you has any leg to stand on when it comes to those images. Oh, there's my mom calling me. <laughs> Perfect timing, mom. <laughs> um, but um, she, um, I actually did that photo. Oh, that was she's from so mom's, pretty. That was from my mom's 70, 70th birthday. I did shoot her fully clothed. I do draw the line. <laughs> Although I have photographed my sister, so <laughs> that took me a while because she was my little sister. It took me a bit to get my head wrapped around that, but I did photograph my sister. But yeah, mom, mom, I did a typical beauty type photo shoot with her, classic shoot. But uh, that's wonderful. So it's not just limited to clothes off. You can shoot clothes on if that's what you're looking to go for. If that's what you want to do. Yeah, we used to do a lot of beauty work as well. And then um, as my, I guess as as my work started going out there, my name started getting out there in the industry. People really liked our boudoir work, and that it kind of organically just like shifted into that direction. That's what people were calling for. Um, Honestly, had you said to me 10 years ago that I would have a specialty studio and only shoot one thing, I would have told you you were nuts. Mm -hmm. um, but here I am. So, you know, I've, I've shot nothing but boudoir for the last five, six years now, I guess. Okay. And I've shot boudoir for eight years. Um, but we've done only, I guess it's about six years we've done just all all boudoir nothing else so um what's the furthest client you've had travel hmm i have somebody coming up from florida uh i had last summer i photographed a woman that flew in from um, south carolina mm -hmm. and shot me um i had someone booked from phoenix arizona uh we have i have a client that's come down from vermont uh upstate new york so probably at this point, uh, as far as already having been shot, oh, Colorado, there is one from Colorado. Oh my goodness. That's incredible. Yeah, she has family in here. So when she came in, she started when she lived here, then went out to Colorado. So now um, I haven't seen her in a couple of years, but when she'd come back for, um, you know, stuff going on with her family, she'd mm -hmm. book a uh, shoot and come in and shoot with me while she was here. So um, yeah, so we do get people that travel in. It, it's not uncommon for us to have clients that come in from a mm, couple hours away. Um, okay. Yeah, we get a lot in the area, regional, but I pull a lot from all over New Jersey, uh, Philadelphia. Uh, I've had Delaware. Um, I have a client in from Pittsburgh. Uh, you know, like I said, upstate New York, um, Connecticut, Vermont. So it's uh again if you really like someone and you like their level of work um i mean we do what i i consider to be a higher higher end level of boudoir mm -hmm. um, if you if you like someone's work a lot of people are willing to travel for that so i think it's true for any form of art a lot of you know tattooers yeah people oh, yeah. People travel for photographers obviously um, so I think that's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. It's like tattoo artists is a great, um, uh, a great comparison because I feel like that's in that industry, it's really the same way. Like there's a lot of people that can do tattoos. There's not a lot of people that can do really outstanding tattoo work. Mm -hmm. And if that's what you want, you get what you pay for kind of right. Yeah. 
For so, sure. you know, it's going on there, it's permanent, you're going to live with it. <laughs> pay a little bit of money and get it done well, you know? So I feel like it's kind of the same thing. Absolutely. What might be a red flag for someone who is interested in shooting boudoir with another photographer? Like what is something either on their website or something that they might say to them during a consultation that would just kind of put that red flag up? Like, don't, don't book this one. Don't book this one. Um, well, I would say I would look at their um, posing work and their retouching work. Like if you're looking at their images and the skin is looking really modeled, um, it's, uh, you know, you can see a lot. Like, do you want to see wrinkles? Yeah. Do you want them to be in the forefront? No. Um, things like that. Look at the retouching work because that'll show you um, a high level photographer versus a, a lower level photographer. Um, as far as things they would say, uh, well, I would think if they wanted you, if a photographer offers to have you come in and like do a shoot with you for free or something like that, or really cheap, that would, that would throw up a red flag. One big red flag, this actually, there was somebody out here doing this and some of my clients um, have been talking about it. And one client brought this up. Um, there was a photographer that was shooting shooting in a hotel is a big red flag It's not not always a problem not always for sure, but it can be so if somebody's doing sessions in a motel or a hotel Check them out really good mm -hmm. because that's definitely a red flag um, but um, There was one that was doing that and part of her agreement up front was that you know she she owned your images and could do whatever she wanted with it. There was no model release, like we were talking uh, about. Sure. And uh, her work was was not very good. Um, I mean, everyone starts somewhere, right? But it was, and one of my past clients made the comment, oh my God, I would be really concerned if I went to her and my images were not what I would want out there, um, you know, just not very well done or whatever. I have no say in it. Like my images could be all over the freaking internet, you know, looking yeah. awful and I have no say in that. So that would be definitely a huge, huge red flag, which circles us back around in that model release. That model release is if you're going to shoot with a photographer, especially for this type of photography work, mm -hmm. there is no paperwork, you know, there's no model release sign. I wouldn't shoot with them. Not at all. They can do whatever they want with your images. That's Technically, a good. They all know. Yeah. So, how can we find you if we want to do a photo shoot? Well, um, I'm on the web, of course. <laughs> so, um, and we're just SusanPageStudios.com. Um, you can go there. You can look at all of our work there. Um, there's uh, options there on our pricing page where you can. So just fill out a form and submit it, and that will automatically kick back out a email to you with our session information and pricing guide. Um, there's also a link in there that you can do a virtual tour of the studio. We have a 1,300 square foot studio in a historic building in Fullerton, which is in Allentown, just behind the mall off of mm -hmm. Fullerton Avenue. And um, it's a, a really neat old building, so you can tour the studio that way as well. And um, if you decide you want to book, we are all set up for online booking as well. So you can do that there, or you can call us. I've had two people in the last day that have called me and booked over the phone too. So either or. Um, we're also on Facebook. Our um, business page or regular page is Susan Page Studios. Um, or you can join our VIP group, which I know you're in. Um, and you know, that's where all the action happens, right? All the good. I'm so bad on the, on the regular Facebook page. Like I always forget to post there because we're in the group all the time. Yeah. Um, so the group is, um, the Hello Gorgeous VIP lounge with Susan Page Studios. And, um, it's a ladies only group. It's uh, it is definitely a no boys club. Um, definitely 18 or older. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, our stuff isn't that bad, but it's right. just, I feel better that way, right? So um, I try to keep it 18 or older, and, um, and you have to ask to join. So um, if you send a, a, a join request in, then I'll scope you out. And uh, if you don't look like you're a guy in disguise <laughs> <laughs> or a 12 year old, I'll put you in the group. So um, 
But the group is fantastic. I call it my tribe. It's over the years, it has just grown. Again, that's something else that kind of went organically. And um, there's a lot of work in there from me, from the studio. It's where we share our teaser pictures if, if we're given permission to from our clients. We do one teaser after their shoot um, so they can see it and kind of relax a little bit and know they did it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's um, but it's also all things female. So, I mean, you know, we talk about all kinds of stuff in that group. You know, we talk about relationships. We talk about mom stuff. Um, we bitch about stuff. Quarantines. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> Mine are going to kill me in this quarantine, I swear to God. Um, yeah. <laughs> but we... Um, you know, we talk about uh, uh, feminism, body image, um, you know, different stuff we're dealing, <coughs> dealing with. I have people, um, generally I'm booked uh, a few months out. So for right now, I think I have, I don't know, I have something like 10 maybe now, because I booked a couple, uh, 10 available slots yet that for the summer. So we've opened up fall, so you can book in the fall. But usually we're booked two to four months in advance and um, kind of depends on the time of year. But um, so clients will often book and then have a waiting period before their session comes, comes yeah. up. Um, we send them a lot of information so they know how to prep. Um, we do do's and don'ts for outfits, um, suggestions for things you want to schedule ahead of time before your session, like get an appointment on the books, get your, your nails done, manicure and pedicure because your bare feet will show, um, getting your hair done like we talked about, get mm -hmm. those touch-ups if you need them, get a trim up, um, uh, any hair removal you have done anywhere, um, you'll want to get that done. If you get any kind of skin things done, if you get... Um, chemical peels or Botox or Restylane or anything like that, you know, you want to schedule that and make sure you get it scheduled far enough in advance that there's no residual bruising or swelling. We cover all of that and what we send out. We will give you um, outfit suggestions, um, do's and don'ts for outfits. You know, if you don't like your thighs, don't bring the thigh highs <laughs> <laughs> because it takes your eye right to the biggest spot on your thigh, right? Yeah. Um, you know, just different things about fit. If you're bigger busted, your, you know, baby dolls can be super cute, but they don't, a lot of times they don't have support um, up in the silky me. You can tell, I'm like so immune to it anymore. They don't have any support. <laughs> <laughs> and this <laughs> is like, you might have no support right now because I don't think I've worn a bra for a freaking month. <laughs> yeah, same. <laughs> oh my God, it feels awesome. But you know, if you're bigger busted and you want to do a baby doll, great, but bring a bra that you can pair underneath it mm -hmm. to get that support. Visually, it'll look better. It's not gonna look weird that you have a bra on. Um, just make sure the bra like matches the same color or is a complementary color that works underneath. Um, we have outfits at the studio as well. So we have the Hello Gorgeous closet we can turn to if we need to, um, to help the client out. Or sometimes clients just find stuff in there that they love and end up switching out one of their outfits for one of ours in the studio, which is totally fine. That's um, awesome. Yeah, but, uh, but all of that information we do send out. You get emails packed with stuff. Um, but, but the group, circling back around in the group, which is where I think I started all that, um, the group is there for everybody as well. So we have clients, like I have one that called today that booked, and she was asking about where to buy some, some lingerie. Mm -hmm. She had a couple friends that shot with us already, so I guess she's asked them. And I said, you know what, put a post up on the group. That's what it's there for. Ask like all, not all my clients, but a lot of my clients are in that group that, have, you know, kind of already walked that walk and they're always really um, willing to offer up advice, help, suggestions, talk about their experiences. So use the group, you know, pose the question there. Hey, where did you guys get your stuff? I'm, you know, I don't know. I'm a size 10 and I'm five foot one, you yeah. know, um, where can I go to get some stuff? And I guarantee you people will, will jump on there and give you some suggestions. So, and it's a, a place of love. Like there's so much happiness and there's so much sharing and compassion and lifting each other up too. It's not, it just makes you feel really good. Whether you are the one commenting, like getting the comments or just one reading as a bystander, like it makes you feel 
really good inside. You're like, wow, everyone here genuinely loves each other and is like a good human being, which is nice these days because not everyone is. <laughs> makes me feel awesome. Oh, good. That's what I want the group to be, you know? So I, yeah, I've had clients come in. Um, I've even just had people call that talk to me on the phone or whatever, if they're going to book or um, just have questions and they'll say like, Oh my God, I love your group. Like, I'm set up so that I get notifications all the time because I don't want to miss anything in there. And your group is just so much fun and it's such a cool place to be. And that hearing, you know, what you were just saying and stuff really, really makes me feel, feel good. It makes me feel like I built something there, yeah. you know, something even more like that's bigger than just my studio. So yeah, I love that. I love that. Like I said, I always call it my tribe. I feel like yeah. it's tribe, you know, so it's just, it's awesome. Perfect. You can um, post, if you want, you can put out the, um, uh, the group name. Okay, so great. You want to look it up on Facebook and, um, you know, you can do that on my website if you want. Yeah, I, you've been usually trying to tag everyone that has all their stuff on, so I'll definitely make sure I do that for you. Ooh, yay. Thanks for spending our afternoon together. Oh, you're welcome. It's good to see you. You too. This is actually kind of fun. <laughs> I know. When I don't have one scheduled, I'm like, well, not what I do with myself because I know, right? there's nothing really to do now. <laughs> I know. It's funny. Things have like changed so much. My son, the son is coming in like crazy out of this window. I'm sorry. I'm like, it's okay. <laughs> but yeah, it's, um, you know, I was actually thinking, you know, talking about the group and stuff, I was thinking about um, putting it out there to maybe do like a Zoom cocktail hour or something at some point um and just have everybody like log into zoom we could have like a five o'clock friday night happy hour or I something get... through the group right yeah yeah i would i'll be there would you be there yeah. yeah i mean it would be fun i mean what the heck else are we all doing right now right seriously I know. if we don't all come out of this with liver damage and great roots <laughs> it'll be amazing we will have cirrhosis of the liver and gray hair. <laughs> 15 extra pounds. Oh my God. My daughter's passing the time by baking. So it's, um, and I, I don't have the heart to tell her no, but I mm. cringe every time she bakes something else. But oh my God, she's good too. Yeah. So I can't not eat it. That's even worse. If she was a bad baker, then it would be fine. <laughs> I know. Right. All right. Although I will say we tried to make churros last night and, um, Hot oil, like deep frying is, is not, um, not, I don't think it's ever going to happen. Um, it looked like we tried to burn the house down. Oh. I had to open literally every window on both floors of my house and put fans on and everything. Like my smoke detectors were going off. <laughs> that bad? Wow. It was that bad. Like it didn't catch on fire, but the smoke was like, by the time we realized what was happening, it was like too late. It was oh. like. Yeah, we were coughing. It was really bad. I'm sure my neighbor <laughs> was trying to burn the house down. But um, look at Susan; she lost it. <laughs> you know, so they need to lift the restrictions because people like me need to go back to work. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because I just I'm left to my own devices at home. I just uh, yeah, I get too bored. So, but we do need to be safe, and um, you know, I'm hoping in May we can maybe start to do some sessions again. I'm sure yes hoping to so we'll see what happens so we'll be on the lookout and maybe you'll get one or two people from our little podcast you know absolutely you know. that would be fun all, all right, right my you. friend all right it was good to see you it was great to see you. let's do it again yes <laughs> have a good one all right you too hon bye, bye.